Hi, buddy. It's Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 7.1. Um, and happy 2013. Woo-hoo. And we're going to focus on particles. So particles are really, really small. We're going to learn how to count them. We're going to learn what atoms, ions, molecules, formula, units, and grams are. We're going to talk about gases and how they're odd in some ways. We're talking about molar mass. Ooh, sounds like a new word of mole. And the density of a gas. So let's hop right into it. A particle is a thingy, which obviously is the chemist's word for stuff. If the thingy has a charge, it's an ion. So for example, carbonate is an ion. F negative 1 is an ion. If the thingy is an ionic compound, it's a formula unit. So for example, NaCl would be grouped as a formula unit. Um, KOH would be grouped as a formula unit because it's ionic. It starts with a metal and a nonmetal. If the thingy is a molecular compound, it's a molecule. Remember, that's two nonmetals. Examples of that would be um, carbon dioxide or water. Thing is an element, it's an atom, atom, so like fluorine or barium or my favorite tungsten. If a thing is a diatomic element, it's a molecule, N2, O2, etc. So you should be able to identify what type of particle these things have, if it'll change slides for me. All of these things are small. Now when we're talking small, we're talking really small. So there's a cell. We're talking really small compared to a cell. So there's 7 E15 atoms in a cell. That means 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, not done yet, 13, 14, 15, that many atoms in a cell. There's this many of those things in one of those. There's 6.6 times 10 to the 20 formula units in a grain of salt. So just taking this one little grain right here, it has 6.6 E20. That means 6, 6, and then 19 zeros. That's a lot. Okay? So these particles are really, 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 really small. So when I talk about counting them, in Indiana I buy a ream of paper, that's 500 sheets, a gross of bottle rockets, that's 144, and a pallet of Bondo, that's enough for three cars. Why such large numbered groups? Okay, so why do I have 500 in a ream and 144 in a gross of bottle rockets? Okay, why such large number groups? Because we are counting small stuff. Okay, a bottle rocket's pretty small. You can hold a gross of bottle rockets in your hand. You can hold a ream of paper in your hand. So we use a mole in chemistry. That's the name of it, is a mole. All right. The number of particles in a mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So if I have a mole of atoms, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. If I had a ream of atoms, I would have 500 atoms. If I had a gross of atoms, I'd have 144 atoms. But if I have a mole of atoms, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. That's a big number. Why is it so big? Because atoms are so small. So how many of what are in one mole of bam, 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 bam? Okay, so I'm going to write the formula for these guys just to make it easy. Water is H2O. That's two nonmetals, nonmetal, nonmetal. So that means it is a molecule. Helium is just HE. That's one thing. That's an atom. Calcium fluoride is Ca. F2, remember it's plus 2, minus 1, so it's CaF2. That's a metal. That's a, that's a non-metal. So it's a formula unit. How many... Oh, and I forgot to say. So there are 6.02 E23 molecules of water. There are 6.02 E23 atoms of helium. There are... 6.02 E23 formula units. Now, in calcium fluoride, notice I have, remember, it's CaF2. Now, how many calciums would I have in CaF2 in a mole of calcium fluoride? Now, I know I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of CaF2. Now, how many calciums are in CaF2? 1 Ca, so 6.02 E23 
atoms of Ca and CaF2, right? Because I get one for each of them. Now, in calcium fluoride, I know I have 6.02 E23 formula units of calcium fluoride, but if I want to know how many fluorines I have in there, don't I have two of them? Or fluorides, actually, which is the F negative part. So, wouldn't I get twice as many? So, I would have two times 6.02 E23, which would be 1.20 E24 uh, ions of F minus. That's a harder one. Oh, how many times does Ben's forget treats? 6.0, and a mole of him forgetting 6.02 E23 um, forgets. And one mole. Gases have an odd feature. At the same temperature and pressure, one at which same temperature pressure which is one atmosphere of pressure atmosphere is the unit of pressure and it's just like at atmosphere it'll be abbreviated ATM all the time for us and zero degrees Celsius it's called standard temperature pressure any gas is 22.4 liters any gas any gas any gas any gas why because the particles are so small they don't matter so let me see if I can get, come up with an analogy of this if I want to put 10 people in a car doesn't it matter how big the people are. I mean, you could probably put 10 Haley's in a car or something like that. That's not that hard to do. Um, but if I'm worried about 10 people on Earth, it doesn't matter. We could be like these great giants, and it doesn't matter how big they are. We can still fit 10 of them. Here's Ben swimming. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. It's practice. I'll go back to land there. But it doesn't matter how big they are. Um, because the container is so big. So why doesn't it matter? It matters how big the people are because it is a small container. Or, or I don't want to say that. I want to say small particle. Particle relative to container. Because remember, these particles we're talking about are small, 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 small. Mass is measured in grams. So now you need your periodic table. So go to the periodic table. Hopefully you have out your periodic table, or this part will go through it. So if I have NO, so this is nitrogen monoxide. Okay, so nitrogen monoxide, what I'm going to do is just add up the mass of nitrogen and add up the mass of oxygen. So 14 plus 16 equals, I should put my point oh, oh. You do want to pull two decimal places from this. So I get 30.00 grams per mole. Okay, So this is how we find the mass of a mole. So it's 30 grams per mole. CO2. Now in this one, notice I have 12.01 for carbon plus 2 times 16.00. And that would be 12 plus 32 it's 44. That took. That was way too hard for me. Grams per mole. Welcome to a new year. Um. Oh man, are you kidding me? Well, I did this one on purpose. So Al equals two times. Oops, I need to look up aluminum. Twenty-six point nine eight is what my periodic table says. Twenty. Ah, oh, and then I wrote the twenty-nine. Twenty-six point nine eight equals. 26.98 times 2, 53.96. Now, how many carbons do I have? I don't have 2, so I have this 3 out here. I don't have 5 because it's multiplied. So I have 6 times 12.01, which is 72.06. Then oxygen, again, I multiply it, so I have 12 times 16, 192. And then I'm going to add all those up. So 192 plus 72.06 plus 53.96 is 318.02 grams per mole. So this is a much heavier molar mass than this. Okay. And then that's an ion, but I just want to point out that these ions don't matter much. So if I have SO4 negative 2, it's simply S, which sulfur is 32.06, if I recall correctly. Yep plus um, 16 times 4, which is 64. I knew that. 
and that would be 96.06 grams per mole. So the charge, the negative charges, don't change the mass because electrons weigh next to nothing. So the density of a mole of gas, remember density is, remember, love, right, with a knife through it. So it's going to be mass, molar mass, over molar volume, which is 22.4. So F2. So F2 is, uh-oh, no. F2 is, well, fluorine is 18, or 19, 38 grams over 22.4 liters, which is 38 divided by 22.4, which is 1.67 grams per mole. Nah, yeah, that's not grams per mole. It's grams per liter, and that's the density of it. Neon. If I go looking for neon, neon is 20.18 over 22.4. So this is nice and easy now. Do you see where I got mass? Where did I get mass from? Well, mass is in grams, and little g means go to the periodic table. So 20.8 divided by 22.4, which would be 0 0.901 grams per liter. Which one would float? Oh, I remember that floating. This one sinks. Well, I remember less dense things float, more dense things sink. And I'm not going to do that one because I want to go. What is percent? Percent is always part over total. So that's how we find out the percent of our grade. For example, how many of your class, class were naughty and didn't get presents from Santa? So you take Harrison divided by 24. There's 24 people in the class, including Harrison. Harrison thought he was safe because he didn't bring treats either, but he's not. And then it would be times 100%, and that would go in the numerator. So let's take a look at a couple. How much of each element is in a compound? So from the formula. So percent composition of CO2. So carbon, go to the periodic table, 12.01 grams. Oxygen is 16 times 2. So 16 times 2, 32.00. So percentage of carbon dioxide would be 12.01 divided by 44.01 and that would be 12.01 divided by 44.01 is 27.29 percent and oxygen would be 32 divided by 44.01 I just want to, oops, forgot my times 100 but I did it So, 32 divided by 44, oh, I just did that one. No, I didn't. Mm. Divided by 44.01 is 72.7%. So, nifty. Mm, well, there you go. Find the percent iron and iron 2 sulfide. So, iron 2 sulfide is Fe plus 2, S minus 2, F-E-S. Formula first. There you go. Show the work. So, F-E-S. Iron weighs 55.85. And sulfur weighs 32.06. Uh, so, together, it weighs... Eighty-seven point ninety-one. So find the percent of iron. So I'm only doing iron. So percent iron is fifty-five point eight five over eighty-seven point ninety-one times one hundred percent equals divided by answer sixty-three point five percent. So there you go. Another way to show this is from experimental analysis. 95 gram, gram sample decomposes into 40.6 grams of carbon and 54.4 grams of oxygen. So I don't need to know the actual formula. This is all that they give me. So again, it's going to be for the percent composition of the compound. I'm only going to do O for this one, just so we can get out of here a little quicker. So oxygen is 54. No, I'm, you know what? I'm going to do carbon because people would make the mistake with carbon a little bit more. So I'm going to find the percent carbon. So the mass of carbon is 40.6. Now people are just make the silly mistake of dividing by 54.4. That's not the total. 
So my total is 40.6 plus 54.4. And it's a foolish, foolish, foolish thing that we do just because we think that we know what's going on with this. 40, whoops. And I get 42.7%. I far too often forget to show the times 100%, but I always mean to. And then I'm not doing the L because I want you guys to have more of 2013 to enjoy yourselves with. So massive calcium, massive calcium oxide. So if calcium is Ca, and calcium oxide is CaO, if I'm supposed to find the percent, um, what is the percent of each element in the compound? Well, let's do the percent, the percent of, let's just do oxygen. Okay, so again, calcium is Ca, this is CaO. So what is the mass of oxygen? Well, CaO minus Ca equals O. CaO is 42.28. Calcium is 30.02. So O is, I should be able to do this, 12.26 grams. So the percent of oxygen would be 12.26 grams divided by 42.28 grams. Now notice, the better you label it, the clearer it is. See how this is O over CaO? That way you can tell it's part over total. So 29.0%. Oh, I think we're almost done. Review! Woo! Moles of groups of particles or anything that are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Uh, formula unit, molecule, atom, ion, or particle. Should be able to identify those. Molar mass equals go to the periodic table. And that is it. So I hope you're enjoying your small world and having a wonderful 2013.